and welcome to DIY Montreal. I'm Marie and today I'm going to show you how I built this huge outdoor planner. Now I'm building this planner for a friend who had some very specific requests. Number one, well she wanted it to be huge and she wants it to be really deep inside so she can plant some deep rooted vegetables. Number two, she wanted it to have really thin slats with spaces in between so it'll look like this picture she saw on Pinterest. And number three, well of course she doesn't want to see any of the screws so they'll all be hidden. I'm almost done with this one. I still need to add the liner on the inside, but let me show you how I built it. Let's get started. I'm going to be building a few of these planters, so I got a whole stack of 1x6 fence boards. Cedar would have been ideal, but my friend brought me treated pine, and that'll work just as well. I also got a bunch of cedar 2x4s that I'll be using for the inner supports, and last but not least, a ton of decking screws. At the miter station, I started by trimming off the end of all the fence boards to get a square, clean, crisp edge. After a few cuts, I realized I forgot to put on my respirator, and I definitely don't want to be breathing in the chemicals from the treated lumber, so I slipped on my mask and continued trimming all the board ends. With that done, I set my stop block so I could cut all my boards to their final length, ensuring they would be consistent in size. Next, I'm going to rip down the boards on the table saw, but I noticed these boards were really wet and was afraid it might set off the break on my table saw. So I activated the bypass mode to do a test. I ran the first board through, keeping an eye out for any red blinking lights, but it was all green so looks like I should be good to go. I'm going to cut two slats from each board. I first started by trimming off the rounded edge from one side of all my boards. I could then move my fence in and lock it down to the final width, and run the board through twice in order to end up with two equally sized slats. I then repeated this for all of my boards until I ended up with a nice stack of slats. I have plans available for this build and you'll find a link down in the description below. Next I'm going to cut the pieces for the inner frame from these cedar 2x4s. Just as before, I used the stop block to cut equally sized pieces, then over at the table saw I first ripped off one edge, then moved the fence in, then ripped my two pieces, ending up with eight identical square vertical supports. To assemble the planner, I'm going to assemble one side at a time into a panel, then connect the four panels like an interlocking puzzle. I laid out all of the slats for one of the long sides and lined up the first slat to the very top and side of my workbench. I then clamped it down so I could use it as a stop and added a couple of small spacers between each slat, making sure to line up the side of each slat with the edge of my workbench. Next I dropped in some vertical supports that I'll be using to assemble the panel. Like I said before, the panels will fit together like a puzzle, so I need to leave a gap on each end that's the size of a slat, so I'll simply clamp one to the edge like so. I could then position my vertical support and line up the top with the edge of the first slat. I then drilled a pilot hole to avoid splitting and drove in a decking screw. With my first screw in, I could just work my way down making countersink pilot holes and driving screws, making sure the boards were snug to the spacer and flush with the edge of the workbench. I repeated the same process on the other side of the panel, first lining up the support at the top, then drilling and driving screws one slat at a time. My workbench was too small, so I eventually moved the panel, making sure to keep the side aligned with the edge of the workbench, and continued the process until all the slats were secured. For additional support, I'm adding two more supports in the middle. I spaced them out evenly and used a large speed square to make sure they were perpendicular to the slats, then added some more screws after first making countersink pilot holes. With one side assembled, I repeated the process to make a second identical panel, then moved on to making the two shorter sides in the same manner. Okay, so time for a little PSA. You'll notice in this video I used my blade guard on every cut, and I also made sure to have the saw's anti-kickback pawls down. While this is always good practice, it's especially important when working with dimensional lumber that tends to be bowed, cupped, or warped. Safety first! Okay, so just as before, I laid out all my slats and lined up the first one to the top corner and clamped it down. I then used spacers to lay out all the slats. The difference here is that the side panel needs a large space on the side, so here I'm using one of the vertical supports as a spacer. The other difference is that I'm going to pre-drill some pilot holes that I'll later use to attach the four panels together. If you're interested, I have plans available for purchase that include all the dimensions, cut lists, materials, and 3D assembly diagrams. Purchasing the plans for a few dollars helps support me in bringing you this free content and helps me continue to make more videos, so thanks for your support. Once all four panels are ready, it's time to assemble this planter. So like I said before, it should fit together like a puzzle. For now, I'll just drop the pieces into place and add a few clamps so I can come back and drive some screws to secure it, using the pre-drilled pilot holes. 
I went around the box, starting with the top screws, and progressively made my way down until I couldn't reach anymore. If you want details on the compact driver I'm using here, or any of the tools that I use, be sure to check out the details in the description below. At this point, it's time to get into the box. Did I mention this thing is huge? I wonder what exactly my friend intends to plant in here. Anyhow, focusing back on the task at hand, I crouch down to insert the lower screws, and it helps to use a clamp here to squeeze the sides together as you do this. With all of the sides now securely connected, it's time to get back out of the box and get to work on the bottom frame. Just as for the vertical supports, I grabbed a cedar 2x4 that I cut to length on the miter saw. Then over the table saw, I ripped off one of the rounded edges, moved the fence in, and then ripped down some square pieces that I'll use to make a frame. I laid out the pieces and drilled a pilot hole to avoid splitting the ends. Now since my bit was too short, I used the tip of the screw to mark the other piece so I could then finish drilling the pilot hole and assembled the corner with a 3 inch screw. I went around like this securing all of the corners to build a simple frame. Next I dropped in the frame, just at the top so I could mark out where the frame will get attached to the vertical supports. Then it was just a matter of drilling countersink pilot holes where I had marked them all out. Before dropping in the frame, I inserted some offcuts just above the bottom slat that will help catch the frame and support it in place while I screw it in. And just FYI, I made the frame slightly undersized by just a quarter inch to make sure it would easily fit. So with the frame sitting on the blocks, I went around driving in some 3 inch screws into each of the vertical supports. Because I made the frame undersized, there were a few gaps, so I just dropped in a cedar shim to fill the gap. I then scored it with a utility knife and snapped it off. I also added screws to the corners making a pilot hole on the diagonal and driving in a screw. So back out of the hole I come to cut the slats that will make up the floor of the planner. I used full size fence boards for this. Using a stop block I batched out a bunch of pieces. Now I'm going to need to notch out the first piece to fit around the vertical supports because I don't want to leave a pocket in which the water might pool. So after roughly marking it out, I used a jigsaw to cut out the notches. It really doesn't have to be perfect, no one is going to see it anyway since it will be covered up by a weed barrier. With the notches cut, I could drop in the first floorboard and drive some screws into the frame after first making some pilot holes. I added some spacers to allow for drainage and dropped in the next board, screwed it down, and kept going like this board by board until I reached the next vertical support. I used my jigsaw once again to cut out the notches, then kept going piece by piece until I reached the end. I'm going to add a frame to cap the top, but I first need to drill some pocket holes using this little pocket hole jig. I made a hole between each of the vertical supports and this will allow me to secure the top without any visible screws. With that done, it's time to cut the upper frame with mitered corners, so I set my saw to 45 degrees and made a first cut towards the end of a board. I then placed the board on top of the planner and lined up the corners so I could mark out the opposite side. I like to creep up on the cut, first making a cut just outside the line and then adjust and get the final cut just perfect. After a test fit, I copied over the dimensions onto a second piece and made the cut. With the two long sides in place, I measured and cut the shorter side, but as I can see it's slightly long so I'll just trim off a hair and test it again. Perfect. So I transferred that over to a second piece and made the cut. To help hold the frame together, I'm adding pocket screws to the four corners. This will just help get all the miters aligned and make it easier to keep everything aligned when comes time to securing it to the planner. I dropped in the assembled frame, and of course I could see that the corners weren't lining up, so I used some clamps to force all four corners into alignment and locked it down. After that, securing the top with some pocket screws was easy. Now in theory I should be using outdoor pocket screws, but between you and me, you can use decking screws just as well. The last step is to add a liner to hold in all the soil so it doesn't slip through the cracks. For this I'm using a weed barrier. I cut it to rough size and dropped it in, then lined up one side with the top edge and used a staple gun to attach it just under the lip. I laid out the weed barrier as best I could, making sure to keep it loose so it won't tear away once the soil is added. I then kept stapling away, up to the other side, and cut away the excess fabric. I cut out another small piece for each end, making sure to overlap the seams, and again use my staple gun to attach it, starting from the top edge and making sure it wasn't too tight. With that done, it's time to test for drainage. The weed barrier says it'll allow for water to pass, but after a quick test I could see that this wasn't at all the case. 
the water just sits there. So I decided to poke a few holes through which should allow the water to drain without letting out the soil. And looking underneath I can see that it's working. This view also shows that I made the supports long enough to leave a small gap underneath so the water could escape. So that's a wrap on this planner. Looks like my cat doesn't seem too sure about it, but luckily for her my friend will soon be over to pick up her new planter. I can't wait to see what she plants in it, and I'll be sure to post a picture over on Instagram when she does. If you want to grab the build plans, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Hey, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so you'll get notified when I post a new video. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.